Hello and welcome back to part number two of History of Caterpillar Engines. If you haven't seen part number one, then please go back and watch it before continuing. Thanks for watching this new diesel history series. The response has been great, so we'll keep making them. But first, let's dive into the history of Caterpillar Engines post World War. In part number one, we discussed the early history of CAT engines, including their involvement in World War II. CAT was a major manufacturer for the U.S. and New Allied visitor. powers. Research and development of new diesel power plants took a backseat to mass production. That was until 1947. In 1947, a new series of tractors and engines was released by Caterpillar to update their aging lineup of tracked tractors. The post-war new lightweight engines included the D311, D315, and D318 models and were released two years after the war ended. This new series of engines was completely updated from their late 30s counterparts and provided a sizable boost in power and reliability for their corresponding applications. The D311 was fitted to the updated D2 until its discontinuation in 1957. After 1947, all D4 tractors were fitted with a D15 engine, and D6 tractors featured the new D18 power plant. Both the D311 and D315 were four-cylinder engines, while the D318 had six cylinders and was a direct replacement for the groundbreaking D4600 model. In 1954, Caterpillar released a much larger member to the D3 engine family, the D326. This six-cylinder power plant was fitted to the new scraper tractor line of machines. The D326 wasn't a particularly popular engine and its reliability issues pushed it into an early retirement in 1959. Another part of the D3 family, the D337, was a groundbreaking piece of technology from Caterpillar engines that would pave the road for forced induction. The D337 was the first CAT engine with a supercharger. The D337 featured a Roots-style blower that boosted the stout six-cylinder engine to a staggering 250 horsepower. After multiple problems with the D337, it was redesigned and re-released in 1955 in the DW21C Scraper Tractor. This newly redesigned engine was called the D337F and featured a turbocharger instead of the Roots supercharger on the old D337 model. The last engine we're going to feature in this lineup is the D343, the predecessor and grandfather of the famous CAT 3406. The D343 was originally fitted to tractors, but over time, they were retrofitted to over-the-road trucks. Eventually, demand for these efficient, mid-sized heavy truck engines grew and CAT would develop the famous 1693. Speaking of the 1693, this very popular motor brought large-bore motors to over-the-road trucks. The 1693 had a notorious rattling that worried many drivers, but was sweet music to cat diehards of the late 60s and 70s. By 1973, times were changing though. More fuel efficient power was needed and cat would soon come out with their first legendary engine, the 3406. The cat 3406 was originally released in 1973 as an over the road engine for heavy trucks. The original 3406A was a mechanical engine that was very similar to the 1693, but with major changes to the head, valve train, and turbo. Early 3406As can be found in Peterbilt's, Kenworth's, Freightliners, and more. Though the same engine, early 3406As were PCTA or pre-combustion turbocharged after-cooled, while later 3406As were direct injected. Before we move on to the 3406B series, we need to talk about another legend, the 3408. Cat's top-of-the-line motor from the early 70s until it was retired in 1985. This monster of an engine powered many over-the-road trucks, but was much more seldom seen than its 3406A and B brothers. The Cat 3408 is a very sought-after engine to this day, though you'd be hard-pressed to buy one off an owner even if you found one. Back to the 3406. The 3406B model was the first Cat engine to feature ATAAC or air-to-air -air after cooling, which was introduced in 1990. The 3406B is one of the most sought-after engines today because of its electronic log exemption. The legendary reliability of the 3406B earned them the nickname Million Mile Motors. After the success of the 3406B, Caterpillar followed up with a transitional engine, the 3406C. Many 3406C engines have mismatched parts from both the earlier B model 3406 and the later 
3406E. You can find either a mechanical or PEEC controlled 3406C during the late 80s and early 90s. We can't forget to talk about the E-Model Cat. This first of its kind electronically controlled 3406 engine paved the way for one of Cat's biggest engine series, the C-Series. The 3406E can be found in thousands of mid-90s Peterbilt 379s and Freightliner classics. We have a video about both on our channel, make sure you check them out. We are finally caught up to the present day and the C-Series. In 1999, Caterpillar released the C-15 and subsequently the rest of the C-Series. The original C-15 was released as a single turbo power plant, but was later updated with twin turbos. Many believe the twin turbocharged version of the C-15, called the C-15 ACERT, or Advanced Combustion Emissions Reduction Technology, is the same motor as the 6NZ C-15 power plant. Actually, the C-15 ACERT features the same stroke as the C-16 engine and a one-piece steel piston design instead of the single turbo two-piece aluminum skirt piston design of the original C-15. The most popular and widely considered best modern CAT engine is the 6NZ series of C-15 engines. You'll find CAT 6NZs in many heavy haul and flatbed fleets. The C-15 is the standard on which many in the industry hold other engine builders like Detroit and Cummins. Its reliable and efficient power have cultivated a loyal fan base that demand nothing but a C-15. Just so we don't overlook the small guys before we wrap this video up, we need to mention the C-7 and C-9 engines. The C-7 and C-9 power plants were used mostly for vocational trucks and now are used in the construction, marine, and agricultural industries. Meanwhile, the larger C-12 is used for over-the-road trucks similar to the C-15. The much larger C-18 engine was used almost exclusively for marine use, but some drivers, including a friend of the shop, have retrofitted a C-18 into a heavy truck. Unfortunately, after the 2008 financial crisis and recession, coupled with more strict EPA regulations, Caterpillar decided to call it quits in the heavy truck engine market. In 2009, Caterpillar stopped making engines for over-the-road trucks altogether, though they still maintain parts and service for all 1.6 million over-the-road CAT engines. Since then, they haven't given any indication they are going to re-enter the heavy truck space, but we are all hopeful that they will one day. Their diesel lineup of C7, C9, C12, C13, C15, C16, C18, and C32 still stands strong to this day in the construction, agricultural, marine, and industrial industries. That brings you up to date on Caterpillar diesel engines. Thanks for watching this first episode of Diesel History here on Jack's Chrome Show. We hope you like this video because we have another episode of Diesel History coming very soon. Next episode will feature one of Caterpillar's biggest rivals, Cummins. Before you leave though, make sure you like this video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe to the Jack's Chrome Shop YouTube. This show is made possible by our online Chrome Shop, Jack's Chrome Shop. Jack'sChromeShop.com is a great place to pick up chrome, lights, detail products, stacks, fenders, and much more. And if you use promo code YouTube, you save 15% on your first order. Drop by jackschromeshop.com, use the promo code to get your 15% off, and help support our show by purchasing a Jack's Chrome Shop shirt in the apparel section. Meet us back here on Monday for the Jack and Dave show and check out the live podcast hosted by Jack and Dave on the Chrome and Steel Radio YouTube channel and Facebook. Until next time, I'm David from Jack's Chrome, and remember, if your rig don't shine,